Ladies and gentlemen, MSI dropped off a very expensive Frisbee. Just kidding, it's not a Frisbee. This is the B860M Mortar Wi-Fi board from MSI. A very, very nice mid-range motherboard that we're gonna dig into today. Unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing I could do in this video to make it more interesting than what a motherboard video can be. So hold on tight. This is going to be a very technical heavy video, but if you're looking to buy a new motherboard, then it's worth sitting through it. Let's get into it. My name is Stefan from Weiru Tech. I spend the money on shit so that you don't have to waste your money on shit. Let's get into it. There's one problem with this new motherboard that I'm gonna have to preface this video with. I do not have the new CPU to put inside of it to test it yet. So this is going to be more of a overview video running through all of the features you get with the board and my experience with working with all of these boards. We'll do a deep review and the performance reviews a little bit later. However, the motherboard doesn't really do that much for that anyways. I'll make a short on it. So stay tuned, stay subscribed and keep your eye out for as soon as my new chip arrives. This is the Mortar. It is part of MSI's mid-range lineup for motherboards. One of the new B860 chipset boards for Intel Ultra Core 2 Series, Series 2. I still don't know why they had to change that name. We were all very comfortable with that. Um, but anyways, this board right here cuts off all of the useless features to make it a little bit more price friendly. They don't cut out any of the important features, just some of the willy nilly things that you don't really need. For example, you don't really need your whole motherboard to light up like a Christmas tree. So they didn't add a whole bunch of ARGB all over the place. It's really sleek and simple. You still get full wireless setup, including Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. You still get four DDR5 RAM slots capable of handling up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. And you get four SATA ports as well as three NVMe slots for storage. One of them is PCIe 5.0, which is tied to your CPU. So this is where you want to store your main boot drive. The PCIe slots are pretty up to standard. You get one reinforced PCIe 5.0 times 16 slot, which is ready for all the new cards. They've even added a supplementary power connector, which is really cool. So if you want to overclock or if the future cards we get become more power hungry, then this board is future proofed for that. Really cool. You do only get one full size slot, although there is a smaller 4.0 slot which is pretty standard for Micro ATX boards like this one. One thing that MSI added here, which I am a very big fan of, is this easy release button for the graphics card. You don't have to dig into between the little CPU cooler and the graphics card to try and unhook your graphics card. It's right here. And it also has a really cool little feature that shows you um, whether the CPU is properly hooked in or not. I mean graphics card. It shows you whether your graphics card is really hooked in well or not. I promise, I know, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 10 years of tech obsession and over hundreds of videos made on tech, sometimes you still wonder whether you should go deeper. You know, gamers nexus deeper. I don't know, I think the use case of the things are more important than understanding what this damn capacitor right here does. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments if you want me to dig deeper into the inner workings of the tech or whether you're happy like I am to know what the tech does, what's new, what we should be looking out for, and what bugs the shit out of us. Like a lack of ports, but we'll get to that soon. Now for the headers. You've got six fan headers, technically seven, thanks to this new one to two easy con cable that comes included, that gives you both an extra fan and an extra three pin ARGB header. Taking the total up to four ARGB and one normal RGB header. So even though the board itself doesn't come with a whole lot of RGB, if you want your PC to be a Christmas tree, you can technically still do that. I wouldn't, that's very 2010 of you, but you do you, boo. Now for the red team people out there, MSI does also make a B850M version of this board that works on the AM5 platform for all the new Ryzen processors and basically has all of the same major features and designs as the Intel version. However, there are a few small differences, like the max supported RAM speed is a little bit slower than that on the Intel, and also one of the NVMe slots have been moved to the back of the board. Although there are also bigger differences, like the fact that you don't get any Thunderbolt 4 or 5 support, 
because, well, Intel actually owns the Thunderbolt technology. Yeah, the onboard DisplayPort is also replaced by an extra Type-C connector. So while you will lose some features, you get support for the arguably better CPUs, which I think is a fair trade, especially with the current situation in the market. But that's just me. Now looking at the design of these boards, this is where I think MSI found the sweet spot. They mostly go with a two-tone black, matte black, glossy black, and a little bit of green splashes, which stands out just enough in your PC to make it look nice, but not stand out in a way that you'd think, mm, that looks cheap and not nice. It's the perfect middle ground. Another super important part of picking the right motherboard for your build is the rear I.O. So let's take a quick look. There's basically everything you'll need back here. You've got a DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1 and Thunderbolt 4 to handle onboard graphics. Four USB 2.0 ports, one of which works with the Easy BIOS flash feature with this little button right here. And there's also one for clearing your CMOS, which is a nice little feature. Thank you, MSI. That's what I kind of like about this board is they made operating the board as easy as possible. Really clever thinking. There are also three USB 10 gigabytes per second type A ports, one USB 10 gigabits per second USB C port, and for internet, you've got a five gigabits per second ethernet port. And then lastly, right at the bottom here, we have our audio in and out. Pretty solid. I would like a little bit more ports though. MSI mostly did a great job with this board, but unfortunately, it's not perfect. It's one of the more slightly premium B860 boards, and in all honesty, there are a few cheaper ones on the market right now, but I do think it's still a good deal. I would like some more ports at the back, especially some USB ports. I'm a USB user and one USB Type-C, it's not cracking it for me. But overall, I think most people won't find anything wrong with this board. Nothing's blatantly missing. It does everything it should. It's a very good form factor and the design language they went with, making sure that it's really easy to use. I give it a solid nine out of 10. But that's just me. You do what you wanna do. I hope this video gave you some value. This was Stefan from Videotech. I'll see you in the next video. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, which means I'll finally get a silver play button. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.